Good evening and welcome to the December 15, 2020 Ordinance Review Committee. This meeting and all who participate in it with us on Zoom will be audio and video recorded. Laura, first on our agenda, roll call, please. Okay. Um, Councillor Labarge, not present at the moment. Um, Councillor Nash. I am here. Councillor Thorpe. Here. Member Peck. Here. And Member Napolitano. Not present. Not present. Okay. Now on to public comment. As always, we will begin as always with public comment. If you know you wish to make a public comment, please use the raise hand feature. To raise your hand, you click on participants in the horizontal menu bar at the bottom of the screen. A column will open with the participants of the meeting. The raise hand feature is at the bottom of the column. If you're calling in by phone, you can raise your hand by hitting star nine. If you're having trouble raising your hand, you may use the chat feature to send a message to me. I will do my best to monitor that for people having technical difficulties, but that is the only purpose for which we will use that function and it will only be used during public comment. We will unmute each hand raised one by one and ask you if you would like to make a comment. When you begin, please state your name and your city or town for the public record. Um, we do not respond during public comment as it is your time to speak. So while your comments should be directed to us, you will understand when we don't respond due to the size of the meeting that is public comment, how remote participation works, all participants will need to be muted until called upon. I also ask that all but the committee members turn off your video until called upon as comments are directed to the committee members and only the person recognized has the floor. We will also do our best to act quickly if someone is clearly acting in a way that is inappropriate. And I will remind people that we are always happy to receive comments by email, which are equally part of the public record. So please email us at citycouncil at northamptonma.gov. Okay. Next on the agenda is the approval of minutes of November 30th, 2020. Do I hear a motion? A motion, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. A second. Seconded. Motion made by Councillor Nash, seconded by Vice Chair Megan Peck. Discussion. Yes. Changes, amendment. <laughs> Megan. Great. Just bring them up on my screen. <coughs> so I noticed that one of the one of the commenters last week, you know, on the thirtieth. Um, she mentioned the chapter 245 ordinances related to panhandling and soliciting, okay. requesting that they be repealed. Okay. I'm um, wondering if we need to address this in some way. I mean, what is that, Megan? I can't hear you. I said one of the, one of the people come, that came to public comments on the 30th mentioned the request for us to repeal chapter 245 in the ordinances that's related to panhandling and soliciting. Just wondering if the committee was interested in discussing that or, I mean, I expect a lot of, um, the city may be enforcing things differently during the time of COVID, um, but, that's some, not something I, I remembered until I read the minutes. Right, so we're just going over the minutes right now. Is there any changes or amendments? We can discuss that at a future meeting, but right now we're going over the minutes and just if there's any approvals <laughs> or amendments, we're not gonna go into discussion about that 245. It's <laughs> not a correction to the minutes, in other words. Right. It's just a I don't have any to offer. Question for future agendas. Gotcha. Right. Councilor Nash. Yeah, let's talk about that at the end of the meeting under new business and we can yes. put that as a, something in the future to discuss. I, I, yeah. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. But there's no changes to the- That's the kids video. Correct, anyone? Right. No, there are a couple of other things so I would like to add to new business and later. Okay. All right. 
So Laura, roll call on the approval of the minutes from November 30th of 2020. Councillor Labarge. Still hasn't rejoined us yet. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor Thorpe. Yes. And Member Peck. Is that a yes? Is that a yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Next up on the agenda, we're going to discuss the commercial buffer zone proposal. And we will have a discussion with Councillor Alex Jarrett, who was here with us this evening. Thank you, Councillor Jarrett, for being here. Laura, are you able to get that up on the screen? I am. Let's see. That's why I can read over it. Oops. Start sharing. Let's see. Thank you. Oh, okay, there we go. Chapter, I'm just gonna read over this. Uh, chapter, chapter 312 vehicles and traffic, section and subsection. 312-25 prohibited activities during certain hours of the day. Text to be changed. The following activities shall not take place in any residential zone of the city between the hours of 10 p.m. and 7 a.m. A, loading or unloading of commercial vehicles. B, collection or distribution of trash, refuse, or recyclable materials. C, construction or demolition activities involving the use of hammers, saws, drills, or power equipment, unless said activities are emergency in nature and necessary for the protection or preservation of property or the health of safety of a person. New text, and there is no specific proposal at this time. explanation. Councilor Jared has heard from several constituents who live in residential zones adjacent to commercial ones that they are often woken up by the noise at early hours, mainly from the emptying of dumpsters, a proposed solution to consider a buffer zone that would apply the time limits within a certain distance of the residential zone. Okay. I'd like to recognize Alex Jarrett. Alex, you, I don't okay. see him on my- Thank you, yeah, can you hear me? I can hear you, I just don't see you, that's all. So oh. you know, I would like to open the floor to you, Councillor Jared. Great, um, can other people see me? I am, do have my video on. Yeah, I can see okay. you. Okay, great. Um, yeah, so sorry I couldn't attend the last meeting and thank you for moving this to today's agenda. Um, yeah, so there's there's that section sec that, that uh, Councillor Thorpe just read. Um, and then there's also another section about noise, which is actually in the zoning, um, which is about persistently loud or disruptive noises uh, between 10 p.m. and 7 a.m. And it has different decibel levels um, depending on the time of day and the whether you're in a residential, commercial, and industrial zone. So those are that's the um, those are the two that I found that that potentially could be related to that. Um, and um, then by residential zone, I'm presuming that this refers to the five zoning districts with residential in the title because residential use is also allowed in all but the general industrial and medical um, zones as far as I was able to determine. Um, and um, so one idea is to um, modify the language to say, you know, that these things would be prohibited in any district where residential use is allowed uh, but that could be potentially too broad if there's, if there's a, you know, in the office industrial, for example, or in the commercial district, if there's um, a need for noise at, 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 a legitimate need for noises at between the hours of 10 p.m. and 7 a.m. Um, and yeah, just specifically in terms of what's been reported to me, um, this is, you know, in, in Ward 5, um, primarily the, the conflicts are around the residential properties, which are bordering Florence and Center, and also um, uh, Silk Mill, which is zoned office industrial. Um, so, you know, I read in last meeting's minutes that Solicitor Seawald suggested that uh, this would be a, a nightmare to enforce, and, and there are potential logistical problems. Um, 
And I wonder if there are other, if anyone knows of other examples in other cities uh, that anyone is aware of, of, of this kind of a buffer idea in terms of, you know, the within and what kind of distances uh, might be appropriate in those cases. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Jarrett. I can tell you, I do not know of any other, in any other cities, I'm just letting you know right now. Um, any other, Councillor Nash? Yeah, uh, that, uh, yeah, and uh, Councillor Jarrett and I had a little discussion about this on the phone the other day. We share this concern from constituents. Uh, it tends to, you know, it tends to happen around uh, apartment buildings, uh, people li living closer to uh, the village and uh, uh, in the downtown area, um, it it's uh, it's hauler showing up to the the biggest complaint has to do with hauler showing up to pick up dumpsters at three, four, five in the morning, and and really just startling you know many people awake, and that um, and that um, so I, I I share that concern. And, um, and I've also, you know, I've been trying to um, do a little research around how we actually enforce this. Uh, I called the building department today. And what, what's interesting is, uh, as, as Councillor Jared pointed out, downtown is a residential zone. And it sounds like the building department does uh, in, in enforce or expect that enforcement will occur uh, in the downtown area for, you know, loud noises. They're not quite sure who's going to do the enforcing. <laughs> so is, is it going to be, so um, I, you know, I'm in the process of drafting an email to uh, 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 John Flagg, the new head of the building department to inquire like, all right, so who's actually, you know, who's going to enforce this? Um, the way I have resolved these things mostly is by getting a hold of the property owner and, and having them reach out to the hauler. And generally, once the hauler understands what's going on, then they, they don't do it. But, um, but the thing is, I think the haulers are confused because they don't know where our commercial zones are like we, well, <laughs> like how, how well do we know our, our zoning maps? you know, that where commercial zones and in residential zones begin, because they are allowed, my understanding is they are allowed to pick up dumpsters like at the industrial park and things like that. And so, um, so I think part of what's going on is there's a hauler, he's the person starting as early as they can, and that, um, and they're guessing as to what, a, what is in the commercial zone. And that, um, and so, um, one of the things that Councillor Jarrett and I talked about was, well, maybe there's a more broad way to do this. So it's really clear to all the haulers, like, just don't pick up trash before seven in the morning for a dumpster, you know, that people are sleeping. Um, and that, um, and that you know, maybe, and have it clear to, to be like the industrial park or, um, or on that or on highway business like King Street. But otherwise, you know, I, I, I think we're asking haulers to do too much interpreting at way too early in the morning. So, so I, I think there's more research. Councilor LaBarge. Yes. Um, I know we do have an ordinance on noise and like no matter with contractors, whatever, they cannot start to seven o'clock in the morning. So I think you're in the right track, Councillor Nash, because I would have done the same thing. I would have called the owner of, of the business of the haulers to say the residential areas, they need to look at this and don't start doing this until seven o'clock in the morning. I think attorney Alan Seawall probably would suggest something on how we move on this about the time, but I think it's ridiculous at three o'clock in the morning and haulers are going into apartments and you're looking at a, a, a quality of life of noise and so forth. So to me, I, I feel that the time should be critical here. Seven o'clock, just like we have for all our construction workers who start at seven o'clock in the morning. Councilor 
Councillor Jarrett. Uh, thank you both for that. The Councillor Nash, I I'm interested to hear that the, your conversation with the building department that they are already interpreting what we have as um, the downtown, which is, you know, commercial business uh, would be considered a residential zone. Um, so if that's the case, then maybe no modification needs to happen. It's just what you described, the, the issue of, you know, talking to the property owner and making sure that they, they understand um, what, the, what the rules are. Um, well, the person I spoke with was directing me to uh, the building commissioner, Mr. John Flagg. So to get further clarification. So I'm not going to, but it does sound like that Yes, that if you're hammering it downtown at 6.30 in the morning or using a saw, you are violating some noise ordinance per the building department. I don't know where that's written down. So that may be what we need to do is mm -hmm. to, to come up with something that's a cl little clearer and, and also to figure out, um, you know, if it comes down to enforcement, who's actually going to do it? Um, that's the other question. Do, does the building department send out a letter saying you've been fined or do, you know, uh, it's three in the morning. Do you ask the police to show up and give that person a ticket? So I, I, I'm, I'm working on investigating this a little more and, I, and I, I'm happy to work on it with you, Councillor Jarrett, to kind of straighten all of this out. And in, um, in, uh, yeah, because I think it's a pretty... It's a, we are, our, our noise ordinance is pretty reasonable, you know, between seven in the morning and 10 at night, you can, you can raise hell doing whatever you want need to do for the city. But after that, you know, everybody's trying to sleep. So, um, <laughs> especially three o'clock in the morning to five. Yeah. 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 <laughs> because I missed what Councillor Jarrett was talking about. What areas, Councillor, are you having problems with? Oh, yeah. So in Ward 5, particularly the residential areas that border Florence Center, um, so Middle Street, for example, even as far as Pine Street, and then um, with the, off, the Silk Mill, which is zoned office industrial, um, and th that area along Locust Street, those are the, the places that, are, that uh, I've heard from residents. Thank you. I also live very close to subsidized housing. And um, there are a lot of um, neighborhood complaints about the, um, so like some of the DPW vehicles or even the snow blowers or leaf blowers that go to work fairly early. I didn't realize seven o'clock that when they, usually they start on the dot at seven o'clock um, was um, in the ordinance, but. Um, that might still be a little too early for a lot of people. Um, and I can imagine the people actually living in these housing complexes with having them, yeah, more, com more complaints, but I don't know if that's something worth visiting. The, maybe moving back an hour, just um, during, during the typical workday hours or hmm. okay um yes. oh i just want to make sure megan's all oh. megan, are you finished yes okay just want to make sure you're i uh councilor barge and then councilor nash thank you councilor um councilor nash and councilor um Jarrett, have you looked at the noise ordinance at all? Yes, yes, and we both discussed it. Doesn't it doesn't specifically um, state. Um, it talks about, what is it, contractors and stuff like that. Does it say owners of um, dumpsters and stuff? Maybe we could change the language and add that in there. No, that, that's in there, a uh, collection of refuge. About dumpsters? Um, it's it's one. implied by yeah yeah it's uh, collection or distribution of trash refuse or recyclable materials. Okay. okay. Uh, All right. Well, maybe the building inspector will send a letter 
to whoever the haulers are and give them a reminder that they could be fined when they're into the residential areas. Councillor Nash. Uh, yes, and, and Councillor Labarge, we're we're gonna we're gonna I, I I'm gonna recommend that we come back put this on a future ag agenda to bring a little more information as Councillor Jarrett and I are researching. Yes, we have seen it in the ordinance for uh, in, in our zoning, but we need to figure out who actually enforces it and where else it actually might be. Um, it, where it also may be in, in the zoning, um, right. as like the building department is indicating. So we can we can come back and report all of that. And to um, Member Peck, um, the the you're you're saying that some of this uh, these contractors have to do with the housing authority, uh, because I will say this that there's a housing authority property that it's their hauler that has been um, particularly problematic over the last few months. Mm -hmm. And um, the housing authority has been great in responding. But what happens is there's been turnover in drivers. So mm -hmm. we have to reteach the new person. <laughs> and so, um, but if that's, if this is going on at a housing authority property, reaching out mm -hmm. to them, um, they, okay. they, they, will, they will respond. That is helpful to know. Um, and, and I can I can share with uh, uh, the contact information after the meeting. It's helpful. I've asked some neighbors not to just um, not just not to just call the police when when they have an issue like that. Um, right. So yeah, no. they, they usually no, they believe me, they all call their city counselor. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and we tend to solve it, you know, by by making having the this discussion with the property owners. Mm -hmm. So, um, okay, Councillor Jarrett had his hand up, and then Councillor Barge, Councillor Jarrett. Um, while we have uh, Solicitor Seawald here, I was curious about his interpretation of uh, what a residential zone of the city uh, is. Is is would would you say that that would be a zone in which residential use is allowed, or, or would it be a zone that has, um, that says, uh, you know, urban residential A or rural residential, where zone where residential is in the title? Um, well, that's a good question. I mean, I would have thought it would be in the residential zones, um, but obviously the city is is taking a different interpretation because residences are allowed in the zone. Maybe that's all you need to do is to clarify that in any zone in which residences are allowed, these prohibitions apply. Um, you know, the, where you get to the kind of more problematic issues are the places that really need to be loading and unloading in the middle of the night, like, like you know, Walmart, Stop and Shop, Big Y. That's what they do in the middle of the night. That's when they unload their trucks. And I'm looking at, you know, the the big Y plaza is adjacent to the urban residential zone. Yeah. So no one in in that plaza would be able to work in the middle of the night. Uh, you know, maybe that's the result you want, but uh, you know, that's going to be a real problem for the gross, you know, for the supermarkets. So, you know, there's always unintended consequences and and uh, difficult situations here. So, um, you know, so if you do make that change to any res any zone any uh, in which residences are allowed, you're going to pick up a lot of businesses that are quite accustomed to at least loading and unloading in the middle of the night. You could select out um, collection of trash for a complete prohibition anywhere in the city during those hours, anywhere in the city. And, you know, be a little more liberal with the, um, you know, unloading of trucks and things like that. Just a suggestion. But, you know, if you create like a hundred foot buffer, uh, I don't know what you were thinking in terms of exactly how to create this buffer. But, you know, it all, to me, it always seems like, okay, you create a hundred, hundred foot buffer that that resident who is a hundred one feet away is going to hear that dumpster just as well and is not going to be happy to be on the other side of the line. 
Um, so these are all arbitrary numbers, and we like numbers that ends in zero, but um, you know they are just arbitrary. And um, so it would make more sense to me to, to to really focus on the issue that seems to be the problem, which is dumpsters, uh, and completely prohibit that early in the morning, uh, you know, before seven o'clock. I don't know what that means for the you know for the trash hauling business. I have no idea. Uh, you would probably know better than I would, Alex, but uh, um, I don't know what that means. But uh, I don't know if your company collects before seven o'clock in the morning, but, um, you know, but it's going to sweep you into this as well. So I hope I answered your question. Yeah, thank you. No, I agree. It's, and it, a lot of it's kind of about the expectation. Uh, I imagine the people who bought their property on, you know, Pinebrook Curve, right next to Big Y, they expect uh, that there's going to be a lot of noise uh, at all hours. And um, <clears throat> but the people in other areas might have a different. And so, yeah, clear figuring out and clarifying that. Um, so Councilor Nash and I, uh, it sounds like we'll we'll think about this some more and talk to how look at how the city is is enforcing it. And if there's other if it's if it is just about dumpsters or if, if, if there are other um, <clears throat> If there, you know, if it's about other, other, the, the other aspects of this, the loading and unloading and the construction or demolition uh, issues. You know, you, you, you bring up a point that we often um, have to deal with in nuisance law, which of course is the unreasonable interference with the, the use and enjoyment of another person's property. So that's what, you know, we're talking about nuisance noise here. And, you know, there's always the question of, did you move to the nuisance or did the nu nuisance move to you? Was it there when you bought your house? So does somebody who moved next to a commercial enterprise have to deal with that? But if the commercial enterprise moved there after they were already there, do they get an ex I mean, you know, we, we always have the moving to the nuisance problem. And, you know, so, so somebody with, you know, very sensitive moves in next to a commercial enterprise that's been there for years and the prior owners weren't bothered by it, but this owner's bothered by it. Are we going to stop that company from doing what they've been doing? These are all difficult questions that I'm sure you and Councilor Nash will be running down in great detail. <laughs> well, thank, thank you for your vote of confidence, attorneys involved. <laughs> Councilor, Councilor Labarge, you had your hand up earlier. Um. No, I think Alan answered to what I had on my mind okay. about nuisance and so forth like that. I just went through that through the entire summer from spring on, on nuisance on a residential area um, off of um, Brookwood Drive. And I got together with the neighbors and they actually took pictures of what was occurring. And that helped us with the building inspector of seeing what was going on hours and hours and hours from six o'clock at, you know, in the afternoon on the weekends all day, then a break, hauling out wood with the chippers and selling it. So that came to a stop and was told never, not zoned for it. So there's ways of handling it. It took us months, but we did it. And as far as uh, like on my ward, I have a lot of people who do call me about noise factors and so forth. The Willard's gravel pit was one of them. That was awful of the grinding of machines in there. And we had a very difficult time with that. I even had lawyers on this ward attending many meetings with the mayor and I and my residents at the hearing room. And um, I'm glad that it's quiet over there now to quality of life. And I'm pretty sure you're going to be able to work something out, Councillor Jarrett, with the nuisance of what's happening there. Okay. I know that nuisance, sorry, ordinances have often been used to, um, you know, just, just disproportionately um, enforce against people who are, um, who are BIPOC or who people who are who are just different, and um, so I'm always really, really cautious about 
I wonder if that's the best thing is to like actually have something like that on the books or as you said, Mary, um, Council Labarge, is it, is it um, more effective to have a counselor, someone who's familiar with the neighborhood and the constituents to, you know, to resolve it kind of in an interpersonal way um, rather, um, rather than imposing fines and fees and um, using, you know, other sort of enforcement tactics. Mm -hmm. So, um, it, it, it takes residents to work with the counselors. You work very tirelessly on it, but when you don't have that special permit for running a business in your home, it's illegal. We're going to say, that's it. You're done. So I look at the quality of life with my residents, no matter if it's in apartments or whatever, they should be able to enjoy a good quality of life. And right now, I am happy to know that Councillor Jarrett and Councillor Nash are looking at this at three o'clock in the morning to five. That's uncalled for. Any other comments? And Councillor Nash, I believe you're requesting that we will, I will table this for a further discussion after you and Councillor Jarrett do some research. You're muted. Yeah, we will be back to talk about this some more. Okay, so this will be tabled for further discussion. And I'd like to thank Councilor Alex Jarrett for being here with us this evening and look forward to seeing you back at the next meeting. Thank you, Councilor Jarrett. Oh yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, Alex. Bye, Alex. Moving on to the next item is to discuss the meeting schedule. So, um, as everyone knows, Mr. Uh, Jeff Napolitano could not be here with us this evening. And moving forward, um, will not be able to join us uh, Tuesday through Thursday. Um, so, in discussing the schedule, what is everyone's thoughts on um, their availability moving forward? Do we want to hash out a full schedule now? Uh, or do we want to do one date in January, a Monday, and then um, have a, you know Jeff Napolitano come back and let us know the other Mondays that he would be available? So I'd like to hear from the members. Council Labarge. Council Labarge has her hand yes. up. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, okay. Um, I just want to let you know I am fine on Mondays. I don't have a problem with it. I'm fine on Tuesdays after 5.30 on the, the first, not on the fourth. Um, from then on, on Mondays at 5.30, whatever. And Wednesdays, Thursdays and Fridays, I cannot. Thank you, Councillor Barge. I believe uh, Jeff won't be with us from Tuesday to Thursday, so I'm hoping for um, Mondays. What? Uh, any other thoughts? Um, should we hash out a just a Monday schedule moving forward to the very end, or should we just pick one Monday now, notify Jeff Napolitano, and then hopefully when he returns, we can hash out the rest of the schedule? What is everyone's thoughts? Megan, I saw your hand up. It would be. It would be useful for me to have the entire month planned out, even ju just um, even if it's just Mondays at five thirty, because I also start teaching, um, and I would have to block off that time. On Mondays, I can't hear. Yes, it. that works for you and the other counselors. Can we just and we know that that's not a day that um, Jeff has a conflict with right now. So Is we that just with you, Councillor Nash. Yeah, the, the thing I, I'm trying to pull up the, the city calendar, and I'm sure Laura is probably looking at this too, is that, um, the, that I'm the chair of community resources. So we have that on Mondays, typically starting at five o'clock. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's generally the third Monday, correct, Laura? Yes. So, so we would miss that. Then there's legislative mm -hmm. matters, which tends to be- The second Monday. Second Monday, which 
I, you know, I often attend, but it's okay if I'm not there, but it is, uh, that's where uh, it's basically the last bite at the apple for committee stuff before it goes to council. Um, but I, I, I could pass on missing that, although, uh, yeah. I need to attend ordinance um, legislative matters as well. Yeah, so, okay. yes. I think in January, legislative matters maybe is proposing a joint public hearing with the planning board on the 14th. So maybe giving up their Monday on the 11th meeting, but I guess there's not a, not quite set in stone yet, but that seems to be what Carolyn and um, we've contacted Bill Dwight today to see if that's agreeable to him. So, because there's 10 zoning ordinances that the, the planning board and legislative matters will both be looking at in January. What, we have, am I correct? I have the fourth in for, for ordinance review, January 4th, is that right? It's on the 11th. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought we were talking about legislative matters. We were, I, but I have ordinance review in my calendar for the fourth, this committee for the fourth. I don't know how it got in there, but is yeah. that wrong? I oh, think good. that's what we, we originally you. just started throwing dates out there when we first started and uh, you, you could be right. What does January 4th look like for everyone right now? Fine. Looks good. Right. We have um, city service at four o'clock. We're usually done a little bit after five. So that's fine. 5.30 is fine or six, whatever. 5.30 on January 4th? 4th. Megan? Yes, that's fine with me. It's good okay. to know ahead of time. Also, do we want to schedule weekly or bi-weekly for, for January? I'm thinking with everyone's schedule. Um, I don't know how we're going to fit it in. How does everyone feel about bi-weekly? Yeah, I like it, uh, except January. Uh, so uh, Monday the 18th is Martin Luther King Day. So yeah. that's the third Monday. So that means... The 25th? Yeah, the, the 25th. But that probably is going to be community resources. Okay. For, for, that's That'll be, you know, our other conflict. What time does that start, Jim? The, typically, it starts at five. Is it a two-hour meeting usually, or would you prefer not to have these back-to-back? -back? Uh, I used the back-to-back. <laughs> um, I, I'm sorry, I was looking at my calendar. I, you know, I'm fine with the back-to-back. -back. It's just that uh, community resources. It, it, it's hard to. I anticipate what the, the schedule is going to be, uh, more so than other committees. Um, so um, we can look at on Tuesday too. Jeff, Jeff won't be here. I mean, we, he won't be here on a Tuesday. Um, and you said, Laura, the eleventh would be. We might push legislative matters to. It looks like they're going to be meeting the fourteenth jointly with the planning board. Is the sort of tentative plan at this point. So we could actually do a back-to-back -back on the 4th and the 11th if everyone wanted to? On the what? 4th and the 11th the of January. 11th. What's, what else is on the 11th? Usually le legislative matters, oh, but, okay, um, but- We're not gonna have legislative matters. It's gonna go look, on that Thursday. That's what, right? that's what they're moving. That's what they're discussing. Okay. So that would be at 5.30 on the 11th? Five or five thirty. What would everyone prefer? Whatever you want, Megan. Um, five thirty would work better for me. Okay. Give you five. a little time between your two meetings. That's fine. Okay. Jim, is that all right? That works. Okay. All right. So we have two meetings yeah. scheduled. That's pretty good. Do we want to move into February or do we want to wait for Jeff? I just want to. Yes. Move into February? Let's move into February. Okay. Mm -hmm. The first, do we have anything going on except for city service at four o'clock up until five? So we could do it on the first. I'm available. Jim? Yes. And I think it's probably safe for Megan, like at 5 30, right? Is that better for you? Generally it is, but it, you know, I'm fine. I could shift things around. Okay. Well, let's go for 530. That's, that's fine. Okay. 
and, and I don't want to exclude, I forgot, um, Attorney Seawalder, are, are these dates going to be okay with you as well? Yes. I'll make myself available. You guys figure out when you're available. I'll make myself available. That's my job. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Wow. Um, should we try for the eighth as well? Yes. Back to back, first and the eighth, okay. Now that will be legislative matters, nope. assuming they have referrals. Okay. Mm. And what time do they start at five? Five. And the 15th, then the next Monday is President's Day? That's President's Day, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It I is. Yeah. I don't have the holidays in front of me, but I'm... <clears throat> yes, it is. Is it? Yes. Mm -hmm. So that means we don't have any city meetings? Right. City Hall is closed. Yes, we can't. Yeah, we won't have a meeting on that day. Um, what, if, what if we do it on a Tuesday? If Jeff missed on one meeting, Tuesday. I'm sure. Um, do yeah. we want to do it on the 16th? Talk to Jeremy. To me. So I, my thought is we have three meetings on the books and right. that, um, and that, um, that I can confer with Laura and also that, um, uh, Councillor Thorpe can confer with her as well. And Laura will be nailing down when these, you know, the legislative matters things are. are so Laura can actually report back to us where the openings are going to be mm -hmm. for, for both January and February. It sounds like we got three already set and there, you know, that once everything shakes out, well, there might be another opening or two on a Monday. Okay. I'm hoping we'll have a better idea end of January as well. How, how many so more? January, we, were, we only have two meetings. 5.30 p.m. on the 4th, and then again on the 11th. Mm -hmm. 5.30, so that's two for the month. And then on January 1st at 5.30? February 1st. I mean, February 1st? Yeah. Right? And Jim is saying, well, let Laura go ahead and send us, you know, when the meetings are. Well, we know mostly all our meetings are on Mondays. We also know that we do have meetings on Thursdays. You might have to go to planning. You might have to go to conservation. And we have city council. I cannot do Thursdays. I cannot ever do Fridays either. Not That's what's going on in my home. Noted. And um, we will, this is going to be on for further discussion anyway. So, I mean, we have three dates down. And I think the proposal Councilor Nash has uh, suggested is, is appropriate and um, that's what we'll we'll stop at three yeah. right now, and we'll have a further discussion down the road uh, on this. But I'm just letting okay. you know, Thursdays and Fridays is on. Yep. Thank you, Councilor Labarge. You're welcome. Next on the agenda, we're going to go over format and structure of the final report. I'd like to open this up. Megan, would you like to? Oh. Just wondering if, um, I mean, the if we should start kind of hammering out of um, start organizing our thoughts a bit into like a report format. Um, we have a we have a few specific ordinances, existing ordinances. Um, that will be that have been reviewed by Attorney Seawalt that we should discuss and decide on whether we're recommending or not. Um, and we're still waiting on a couple of um, agencies to submit the recommendations to us, right? That is my understanding. The Department of Public Works is supposed to be um, providing um, some ordinances to us. Mm -hmm. And then we have this big kind of group of nebulous, like um, more like ideas that could turn into ordinances mm -hmm. that um, I, I think is important to include in our report as well. Um, since uh, so that, you know, I could, I could definitely um, draw something, a proposal for how our report will be organized um, and share it with you at the next meeting. Yes. Thank you. I appreciate that, Councillor. 
Megan, Megan Peck, I mean, I, I, your, 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 your contributions and everyone else's contributions on this uh, committee is, is, is noteworthy. And I, I appreciate you and everyone on this committee. So thank you. Um, Councilor Nash, you had your hand raised. Yeah, I, yeah, in it, in it, so um, the way I approach, um, I, it's good we're having this discussion and, and I appreciate what Member Peck has been saying. And so my approach to this would, is I, we have our buckets and I, I feel like what would be handy to have is like some sort of Google Doc or um, or a spreadsheet that says, you know, here's here's the things that are in, you know, bucket A, bucket B, bucket C, and also where they where they are and when we expect them to come back, um, because some of these are are ideas that are actually they're being sent to committees and they may not be able to respond back to us. By the by, our uh, the end of our reporting uh, our reporting deadline because they're big ideas, um, but just that 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 would be part of the report is that this is being looked at further by you know, the housing partnership, um, and um, but having some sort of grid to just figure out you know he, where everything is, and I would expect that all of those those things in the bucket that you know which are the the housekeeping type of of, of changes, I'm expecting we're going to show up with those. Those that is definitely would definitely be part of the report. It's the bucket B, B and C things that it, that I'm less clear about. But I think um, that we want to figure out a way that it's accountable uh, to us and to uh, city council as we hand it off and to the mayor. So, um, no, I absolutely agree. Thank you. Nash, and I think like Laura has um, has got has kind of started on that already as she sent us the I think it's an Excel those um, oh it is all right I'm uh, sorry I haven't looked at it. we could add like a status kind of column to see right. where we're at with each um, and for this report I'm not envisioning it being a 90 100 page report but I think there we should kind of talk about our purpose you know, for for being because not every city has a you know ordinance review committee or feels like they need one and we have a you know we have this amendment um, that um, you know that that makes us a little different um, also so there's that and also talking about how we how we did our work how we how we are re, our our review process. Um, mm -hmm. And just um, making it clear that we are doing, you know, this is like an ongoing process. I mean, this is, these are, you know, any given time you city councilors are working in different stages of these ordinances and ordinance reviews. Um, but this is what we, a special committee was able to do within these six months. And um, we're gonna try to cover a representative, you know, that disproportionately affect marginalized communities. Um, and that's, that's what the best we can do. And, you know, after March, the work will be carried on by others, um, hopefully. So that's just like, that's another section I feel like um, needs to be written. And I'm, you know, I'm happy to start drafting that. Um, unless it's something that attorney Seawald um, feels like he should do. I. Um, I will, I, I appreciate everything you said. And that's actually, I think that everything you said, it's, it's actually stuff that we would want to have in the report. So that's a, um, it, it's good that you brought that up. Um, Attorney Seawalt, do you wish to be heard? I am happy to uh, prepare a, a draft. Um, however, the committee would like it done. I'm, I'm happy to do that. Uh, I, Oh, let's see, which I've done a couple of these review committees that I've drafted reports for in the past. So I do have experience doing that. If one of the committee members would like to tackle that, I'm, uh, I have no pride for authorship or anything like that. So just let me know what you want me to do and I'm, I'm ready to do it. Okay. Thank you. There, so I'm sorry, is there a publicly available 
are there publicly available copies of these past reports? Like from yes, the, the members the, or? Uh, you know, the, uh, the, um, the review committee, I didn't draft this one, the, the uh, charter review committee just submitted one last year. Mm -hmm. uh, the ordinance review committee uh, was in 2015. Right. And I drafted one for the, the uh, charter review committee that that's the last one before we went to the new charter. Actually, our, that report said we have no comments other than we need a new charter. Uh, and that's what we did. Um, so, uh, you know, I've done this a couple of times before. I've been through this process. I'm happy to do that. I'm happy to review a draft, however, you, is, is, you know, more effective for the committee. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Attorney Seawald. Councilor Nash. Yeah, this is for Attorney Seawald. Is there a general outline that is, is used um, that you think is helpful? I mean, I, 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 I like what uh, Member Peck is recommending that, you know, our, that, you know, our, we, we have our views and our approach embedded in, in the document, but is there a general format that is recommended? Um, no. I mean, you can take a look at the format that uh, that uh, the uh, Charter Review Committee used this time um, and the Ordinance Committee. I believe the, the way I handled the last ordinance review was we attack, we, we uh, provided a, a narrative which included a lot of what uh, Member Peck was talking about, uh, about, you know, um, uh, you know, methodology and what we looked at, what we were trying to do and then attached a spreadsheet to it with changes that we recommend. Um, mm -hmm. That's the way we did it. It doesn't have to be done that way. However, you know, the committee th thinks best communicates your recommendations. There's no form. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Councilor Barge, did you have your hand up? Yes, I'm just wondering, five years ago, they must have, Laura, something that is stored in files of looking at exactly what they were targeting at to help us. I you think know? that was actually on the very first agenda for this committee was the report from 2015 or whatever the first you, was it, you, ordinance review committee. So that report does exist in the clerk's office and actually I have a copy of it. So. Okay, great. That was uh, submitted by attorney Adams, at, uh, Councilor yeah. Adams at the time, so. That's right. That's pretty brief, briefer than yep. what I'm proposing, but um, something between that and the Charter Review Committee in terms of length and um, sensitiveness. So, mm -hmm. okay. So. Councilor Nash? Uh, I'm good. Okay. I think, I think we have a plan here. Okay. Megan, any, Megan, looks like you want to say something. Oh, well, there's not an item for um, new business on the agenda, but I did mention a few things that came to mind when I was looking at the November 30th minutes. You know, that goes under, that goes into the next one. We're, right. Councilor Nash, Bob, we're going to talk about that on the remaining ordinances to review. Okay. Oh, there's one more line. Okay, good. <laughs> Well, I think it mentions new ordinances for us to review. And I think what uh, Member Peck wants to discuss fits in under that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> not, not during the minutes, but that, <laughs> okay. Well, so, it, so it's not up for discussion. We're just saying what we want to do in a, at a future meeting. Correct. Right. But before we move on, are we all set with discussion around the format structure of the final report? Um, I just want to make sure we're, we're going to have this discussion again, I'm sure, but I just want to, oh, Councilor Nash. Yeah, I just want to say, let's just keep this on the agenda that we'll just keep touching on it till, till it's done. And, um, and if we keep working on it, we'll have, we'll have, it'll all come together. So. Oh, yes. Okay. Megan. So. Um, You're, are, I'm done with it. Yeah. Okay. Okay, good. So now we're going to move on to the last item, which is remaining ordinances to review further research needed work plan for second phase. Now, let's open for discussion. 
Megan, regarding the November 30th minutes, you pointed out the chapter. Okay. So one of the public commenters referred to chapter 245, mm -hmm. uh, the section of ordinances that pertains to soliciting and panhandling. Yep. And recommended that they all be changed or something. That's, um, I don't have the minutes in front of me right now, just one moment. But um, I wanted to have um, Attorney Seawalls, I want to ask if Attorney Seawall could weigh in on that and it, I, and how the city is um, enforcing or not during the, during this um, emergency COVID phase. We, we never enforce any anti-panhandling uh, laws. I didn't see anything in 245 that applied to panhandling. It has it applies to hawking fish and vegetables and soliciting customers. It doesn't say anything about panhandling or panhandling is in there. In any case, uh, ironically, just today, the Supreme Judicial Court struck down uh, the state pan anti-panhandling statute uh, as uh, unconstitutional and a violation of the First Amendment. So there'll be no, there is no, has been no, and will be no regulation of panhandling or in any way requiring a permit or issuing any fines for panhandling. It's First Amendment protected expression and uh, it's perfectly permissible as much as some people uh, don't like it. it there's, there's not a real lot we're gonna do about it. So. The mayor knows this, and this is fairly well known that we have a you know a couple areas we don't enforce sign ordinances and panhandling. We don't do any enforcement of panhandling, mm -hmm. and two forty five does not apply to panhandling. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you, thank you, Attorney Sewell. And that that case I know was out of Fall Fall River, and that was just I just saw, read that today. So about that decision regarding panhandling. So another suggestion is that uh, the city repeals any sort of camping and related ordinances, which I actually didn't, I couldn't find at all in our code book. I do, this, think, do they exist? I think any? Councilor Nash might have touched upon this the last meeting and yeah. had found that there was no, and Councilor mm -hmm. Nash, I'll let you speak to this, but if I remember correctly, I believe you had brought this up. I, I believe I mentioned it at the last meeting that I, I you know, I, I did my review of ordinance, which, you know, I'm not super precise, but, you know, I do <laughs> know how to use a search engine. And I was not able to come up with anything that prohibited camping on city property. I do know that um, there is prohibitions against camping on uh, city conservation property. Um, so, um, but it, it, as far as prohibiting camping, I, you know, anywhere in public, you know, in Northampton public space, there, there's nothing on the books. There's things about camps, but mm -hmm. like a kid's camp, but not about camping. And it looks like attorney Seawald might have something to say. I think that the real problem with, with, uh, if you want to call it camping, but you know, taking up a residence for long term in a tent is that there are no sanitary facilities. It's more about sanitation than anything else. Um, and so the state sanitary code would apply and other laws would apply, but I don't know of any ordinance that specifically prohibits camping in the city of Northampton. Obviously, we have people camping out on the steps of City Hall right now. Um, so we can't be doing too much camping enforcement right now. <laughs> Adjoining towns, I'm sorry, um, like Westfield have specific um, ordinances against um, outdoor camping and erecting temporary structures. But um, I imagine it's because the, the organizers that show up to our meeting are, are regional. And so it may be a request that it's kind of generalized um, and not specific to Northampton. So, but I, I interrupted someone. Thank, thank you, Megan. Councillor Nash. Well, you know, I, the, um, I, I'm going through, so uh, Taylor Porco provided us with a lengthy letter of things that 
um, that Taylor would like to see us work on. And I'm going down the list of the different things, and I, I'm 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 uh, I, I'm trying to work with uh, uh, Alan Wolf with the mayor's office to just kind of clarify what's fact and what's fiction, uh, because I, I yes I do. Uh, uh, Member Peck, I think that part of what's going on there is that there are regional issues uh, around uh, houseless, the houseless population that we're actually ahead of the curve on in, in many ways. That, um, that uh, you know, if you do a Google search for, um, you know, for services for uh, houseless people, they send you to Northampton. That's, we have, we have different services here. That the that the you know the old county seat you know so you have DMR DDS we have ServiceNet that all of these organizations they're here and and that um that that is that's you know anyway I what I I'd like to have this on a future ag agenda to just kind of review it and and and. Um, and also to get down to really what what are the things that we could be working on around uh, what uh, uh, Tay has has um, has suggested that we look at. Um, so, sure. sure. Thank you, Councilor Labard. I'm fine. Okay. I agree Thank with you. Councilor Nash was talking about. We're in the same boat on that. Okay. Um. I think Tay Porco did say that she was going to she was going to email us a list of towns that have enacted these protective policies. Did that ever happen? I have I, not received anything. Okay. Yeah. Look at Fernie Seawald. Attorney Seawald. Uh, what one of the things that Tay wanted uh, the committee to look at. Um, was a, an ordinance prohibiting the sale of public buildings. And I just wanna caution you about that because the same five counselors, hold on for one second. So the same five counselors who vote that ordinance in are the, are the same number of counselors that could vote to sell property anyway and just suspend the ordinance. I mean, it's a meaningless ordinance because you need five counselors to uh, to pass it, and all you need is five counselors who want to sell property to suspend it. And so um, I just caution that uh, not to fill our ordinance book with ordinances that really don't do anything. Comfort well, Nash. And that's one of the things I want to research is how often the city has actually done what is being suggested there that we that the city has in the past um, uh, sold or given property to developers for profit for the city um, that's taking um, uh, opportunities for uh, affordable housing off the books mm -hmm. I, I don't rem I, I just don't think that's an accurate statement in terms of the city transactions that I've sat through on council that it, we're, we're always meeting some sort of open space requirement, some affordable housing uh, piece. There, those are aspects, you know, anytime you work with the city that, that our planning department is working to meet one of those goals and that generally that, that's what happens. And that um, there's only been a few occasions where we've outlight, right, sold property to help pay for things uh, like uh, the, the country club deal that we, uh, the, the golf course deal. There are some properties that are gonna be sold at market rate, but overall we're getting this, this enormous piece of conservation area and that it's all being rolled into part of that package to make the whole thing work. So um, yeah, I, I, so that's another thing that I, I, I'm contacting Alan Wolf about to really get better information. Thank you, Councillor Nash. Almost every sale that I've been involved with over the past, uh, how long has it been, eight years uh, that I've been city solicitor, there has been some public policy, some, some, you know, some need we're trying to fill, whether it was, you know, I actually 
many, 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 maybe 30 years, maybe longer than that, I sat on the committee that, that decided to sell the Northampton, the school to the Northampton Community Music Center, which is in my neighborhood. I mean, that filled the need. It wasn't housing, but we have lots of needs in the city. So, and you know, a lot of these buildings are not really set up for people to live in. And they weren't residences when the city was using them and they're not residences now. And it's, you know, um, and if, if we're going to be expected to turn these into residences and provide the sanitary facilities that we need in order to turn these properties into residences, we're going to have to, you know, approach this financially in a whole different way. I'm not really sure what that way would be, but um, there's a lot of money to be spent to do that. Council LaBarge and then uh, uh, Megan Bernie Peck. Seawald, didn't, I th was it the school committee at one time? I forget how many years now. Uh, St. Mary Cemetery, wasn't there a school? Um, it, it's really an old school and we sold that property and somebody bought it and restored it for a house. Maybe you weren't our city solicitor then. Uh, no, I'm, I wasn't solicited and that doesn't ring a bell at all. Mm -hmm. You know, the ultimate sale for housing, of course, are the, you know, the old school commons. I mean, that's right. those were public buildings and those were sold and for private development. But of course, we, we got 25 years of the Center for the Arts on the top floor. So that was the, you know, what we got for public benefit from that. There's always a public benefit, almost always a public benefit, some sort of public benefit that's included in the sale of public buildings. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, Megan. I feel a sense of responsibility to maybe include in this report um, clarifications and, and corrections of any misconceptions and also to recognize the, the, the really, the very real concern that a lot of people have about the houseless, especially now. But the fact that, you know, there aren't that many options because um, any congregate setting is really, it's really risky um, during this time. And um, there are very few options of, um, to, you know, to, for, for indoors for um, the, the surgeon numbers uh, that have um, arrived in Northampton. Um, so we're, so that's, uh, I feel like we do need to provide a little bit of that in our report um, in the sections about, about housing. And um, um, again, that's of course, like that's in, you know, in, in partnership with people who know a lot more about this with, with the housing partnership members who have worked on the unlocking opportunity just report and um, with the planning sustainability department. Um, yeah, otherwise I feel like there, there are a lot of these, you know, comments that we hear over and over again and not just, not just in this committee um, that, I, I mean, they deserve to be, they deserve to be addressed and recognized, but also, um, you know, it's part of our responsibility to educate the public. Um, Great. Thank you. Thank you, Megan. Councilor Nash, were you gonna say something? No, I'm, I'm wondering if, uh... I, I, my one worry, and in, in it's Attorney Seawald, are, are we getting off topic here? In other words, this, we're, we're kind of talking about something that's not on the agenda and that, um, are, 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 are we, are we going off the rails here or? <laughs> I can't hear you. I thought the agenda item was to talk about what upcoming topics we're going so to we're use. okay all right good all right or they're just batting around things different things to be talked about in the future okay all right all right so megan oh one more thing i i heard from um 
wing fight in today because I was in the last meeting I mentioned I was going to ask him about the, the status of the um, materials for the housing disability Nof notification act um, that what the the um, the list of resources, the financial, legal resources that was to be to some distributed along with the um, the notices to quit for people who are facing eviction. Um, and he said that it didn't appear to be completed, but he said to um, that we should con contact community action if we want to help um, with outreach and dissemination of that. But there doesn't seem to be something that's drafted and ready to like post onto a web page at this point. Um, so just well, I'll up on that. Huh. I need to, at some point, yes, we will have a further discussion. I need to know a little bit more. Uh, about that and you know contacting community action um, they do great work so i do know um, okay so i i want to add um member peck that i'm i'm having a similar discussion along this line around getting out information uh as far as the community resources committee for council and um and councillor jared and i had had a discussion about bringing in a leadership in the community around this and around the that particular uh, item that around um, how to get information to people who are facing eviction we we're asking just that question how do we figure that out you've answered the question for me <laughs> so we now know who that the community action could yep. be a resource to invite to our community resource meeting and i'm also um, I'm scheduled to have a phone call with Pamela Schwartz on on Thursday to talk about her coming in and her and speaking of her work around advocacy for uh, uh, people uh, who are um, uh, homeless. So, uh, you know, again, to bring leadership and people and knowledgeable about the what's going on, um, I'm, I'm trying to get them to community resources. Mm -hmm. so thank you for sharing that information. This is also a focus for the Human Rights Commission. So if any of us could be of assistance there or help to bolster efforts, please let, please reach out to me. Thank you. Councilor LaBarge. Yes, um, also to um, Jennifer De Derringer, she's excellent as an attorney who helps people who are going to become evicted and we've had her come in before. She's excellent. She'll, she'll give you some. That's a great idea, Miriam. Yes, she's excellent. Thank you, Council DeBarge. You're welcome. Yeah. It would be great for people that are part of listed on this sort of resource list, um, representatives of these like, you know, uh, legal aid and service net and people to come and help uh, within a public forum or they got community services, <laughs> legislative services, one of those committees. Um, okay. I just thought that it's just um, with so many facing eviction in a few weeks, if even that, you know, we can't, we don't have time to wait for the drafting of an ordinance um, before, before educating as many people as possible. So. And again, like Attorney Sewell said, we will, you know, no one's able to really affect the eviction, but it could help prepare people um, who are anticipating evictions um, while they're still housed with an address, um, have, have some resources. So for Jennifer, believe me, Derringer, she's excellent about evictions and so forth and how they go in and help you know, families or just one person, two people together of going into the courts to prevent them from being evicted. Yeah, I believe she's with legal aid and attorney Seawald would know the answer to that. Yes. Most people being evicted do not have legal representation, right? 
You would think I would know that, but I don't know that exactly, but I can find out. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I got to remember that. Um, so. So we're yeah. going to say anything? Or Jim? Like there might be resources that if people are aware, like I, I Jen Derringer may be uh, somebody who could, you know, assist somebody around that. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, so this is kind of my next assignment for, for community resources. And um, that uh, if we're talking about information, that's, that's what I'll be working on. And as far as if we have any ordinances, um, yeah, I'm, um, I'm, I'm up for talking about them here. Okay. Any further discussion? We will be having just, we will be having this discussion again. Just want to make sure everyone's clear on it. Is there anything else that anyone wants to say? No. Okay. Well, we have one more item on our agenda. Jim? No, I'm going to let Member Peck do Megan it. Megan Peck. <laughs> Move to adjourn. Second it. Okay. <laughs> we, are, we are adjourned. This meeting's over, and I'd like to, you know, uh, move a roll call. Roll call. I always forget the roll call. Oh, <laughs> Thank you. No need it, but it's it's a formality. Yes. Councillor Labard. Virtual meetings, you need a, a roll call in every vote in virtual yes. meetings. Hmm? Oh, okay. Yep. Councillor Nash. <laughs> I heard Councillor Labarge already. She's mm -hmm. Councillor Nash? Yes. Okay. Councillor Thorpe. Yes. And member Peck. Yes. Yes. Okay. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night, everyone.